Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Polly, and welcome to Podcast 6.1, where we're going to go over endothermic and exothermic. Uh, big idea six is basically heat, okay? And heat is going to form uh, delta H, temperature, and Q. So you're going to find all those. Let's do it. Endothermic and exothermic process. Hey, we've done this before. Energy absorbed or released in chemical reactions. This is an always thing. They will never have a zero. Okay. Always. Temperature changes indicate energy changes. Okay. So now we're going to focus on the two different parts of it, the system and the surroundings. Okay. So if I have a chemical reaction happening in here, I'm going to call it a reaction. Okay. The reaction in a beaker and thermometer. Okay. Reactions in a beaker. Whoops. Ah. Uh -huh. The reaction is in a beaker, and the thermometer goes up. The reaction in the beaker is losing energy. So if I put the thermometer in here, right? Let's say I make it a, a red. Oh, come on. Come on, you punk. That's red. You're punking out on me. Um, so my thermometer is here, and if it goes up, it gets that because heat is being given from the system to the surroundings. So the reaction in beaker is losing energy that is being absorbed by the thermometer and making the readings go up. Same thing's true. So I stick my red finger in here, right? This is my hand. And if, I, if it feels hot, that system is giving heat to me, right? So the system is exothermic. When the system is losing energy, the surroundings are gaining energy. The surroundings are everything outside of the system. So that'd be everything outside of my beaker. Boom, right there, okay? On thermometers, the heat goes up, the surroundings are gaining heat. Okay. You, if you feel warm, you gain heat, and the system loses heat. The environment, the environment gets warmer, and the environment gains heat, and you, not you, I'm sorry, and the system loses heat. Okay, very rarely used, but a weird little duck here. Um, energy equals heat plus work. So Q is heat, and W is work. Work is the energy to move something. It's got to actually move. Work equals P delta V. So that means we're going to change the volume, where P is pressure and V is volume. P delta V is going to be a, a piston. So if I have something like this, well, this might be the best piston I've ever drawn in my life. So this is has a certain pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I change this, um, then that's what's going on. So if it expands, expanding, work is done on the system. Okay. So work is done on the system. Ah, okay. That's it. That, I, I haven't even seen a question like that in a long time, but it's like, eh, it's a piston with P delta V and there could be a temperature change. So if I tell you, um, Volume equals 20, temperature, or I'm sorry, Q equals 10 joules. And then the how much energy was put into it if the volume is now 35 and um, the Q is 10 joules. So the volume just changed, right? So remember, E equals Q plus W. So here I have... 10 plus 20 is 30. And over here, I have 10 plus 35 is 45. So 15 joules were added. Okay. So energy comes in the form of work or heat, and it's got to add together for total energy. All right. There are some new endothermic processes. A phase change going into a higher energy state. Boom to boom, okay? So I'm gonna make this darker. So this right here is a solid, this is a liquid, this is a gas. The stuff that I have highlighted, I'm gonna make this quite a bit thinner now. Going from a solid to a liquid is an endothermic process and a liquid to a gas is an endothermic process. The system is absorbing energy by melting and boiling. Okay, so pictures of before and after melting. So here's my little, my little dude. Dude, I, I'm going to give it a whooshy. How about that? 
whoosh. Do, 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 whoosh. This is my before, right? It's on the bottom. Oops, I'm going to make sure it looks more on the bottom. And then in the end, oh, that's melting. Okay, so they're going to expand a little bit. So notice how if this was 10, this is now 11. Ooh, milliliters. Okay, so it expands and they move a little faster. Okay. Now boiling. So if I've got my four guys, the double wooshy, I guess you can't see it. This is spinning. And then as a gas, oh, this is a solid. This is a liquid. This is a liquid. I didn't mean to make this one bigger but I'll go with it. Okay, so um, what I want, actually, you know what, I'm going to change that a little bit because the whooshies indicate kinetic energy. I'm going to have this one have the same number of whooshies, but it just changed. So we've got empty space. It has space, right? And it has the same temperature, okay? So I'm going to actually take this guy down to the single whoosh as well. Oh, it's not letting me take it to the single whoosh. Oh, you dirty dog. Welcome to my pen not working. That's okay. I can re-whoosh. So I just want to say again, changing state of matter does not change your whooshies. Okay? It changes size and it changes distance. All right. Another endothermic reaction is where bonds only break. So if I start off with CLCL, boom, boom. Then just sad CL. And this should just look so ugly to you because single electrons should make you go, oh, I can't stand to look at it. Okay. New exothermic processes. Phase change to lower energy states. Okay. So this would be, um, this is condensing steam. So this is a gas turning into a liquid, turning into a solid. Okay, so these guys right here, well, I don't know. All right, are where endothermic process is taking place. All right, so review solution formation is in here too. So solute, solute breaks, solvent, solvent breaks, solute, solvent forms. Okay, so we've done this before. This is on the test. Okay, now. On this, they're going to ask you about the bonds. We have ion H bond. What? Ion H bond? Yes. And a positive with water is an ion H bond. Okay? Um, or ion dipole or dipole dipole. All right? Energy diagrams. This is a whole big idea part. Energy diagram part two is the hump PE diagrams again. Okay? Heat transfer and thermal equilibrium. You have to be able to read a Boltzmann diagram, right? And you need to know this, I think, maybe is new. Average kinetic energy is the peak of pump. So what do you have to know about the Boltzmann diagram again? Well, what you have to know is lower and righter equals hotter. Okay? And average kinetic energy is the peak of the hump which is temperature. Energy flows from hot to cold, so that shouldn't be anything new to you, right? And remember, the heat gained equals the heat loss. Because energy can never be created nor destroyed, if one thing's getting warmer and absorbing energy, something else is losing that same amount of energy. Now, mind you, that is energy, not temperature. So one thing might lose, one thing might lose five degrees, and its counterpart gains like 70 degrees, okay? So because they're different substances, this would be good news, because they're different substances, they'll have different um, rates of heat exchange. Thermal equilibrium, or temperature change is really what I meant. Thermal equilibrium means touching things at the same temperature given time. Know that, because you're gonna see an awful lot. These are in thermal equilibrium. What does that mean? It means, Touching things have the same temperature given time. All right, let's take a look at some heat calculations here. All right.
Um, energy change for the same state of matter. So that means heat a solid or heat a liquid or heat a gas. They have to be different. They have to stay the same state of matter. Okay. The formula is Q equals MC delta T. I call it MC delta T. Most every other teacher calls it um, M cat. Okay. Q is heat um, in joules. Perhaps they'll use calories. I will do my best to always use joules. Heat is energy. And one calorie equals 4.18 joules should you need to convert. C is specific heat. Ooh, doggies. Oh, I forgot to, I think I forgot to put this in here. Mass equals M or M equals mass in grams. Um, C is specific heat, and its units are joules per gram degrees Celsius. So specific heat is the energy it takes to change one gram one degree Celsius. A low specific heat changes temperature easily and quickly. Metals have a low specific heat. Gases have a high specific heat. Insulation has a high specific heat. Every substance has a unique specific heat. And delta T is the change in temperature in Celsius or Kelvin. So if it's summertime, summertime and the weather is fine, and I'm barefoot like the hillbillies, right, as I always am, when I'm on the cement, so it's summertime, it's 100 degrees out, um, and I go walking out on the cement, I burn my little tootsies. So what do I do? I jump on the grass. But the grass is 100 degrees Celsius as well. This, ow, this, meh. Okay, why cement has a low specific heat and changes temperature easily. Gases have a, or grass, I said gas, grasses have a high specific heat like a gas. Okay, I should say, change that to insulation. Boom, okay. All right, here we go. We are going to stop right here before we get to calorimetry because I have 26 seconds left to make sure we don't hit 15 minutes. And I will say two, 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 toodles. See you soon, my friends.